بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson which is the vocabulary building vocabulary building but before we do that let's open our workbooks page 82 open your workbook page 82 let's answer exercise C complete the paragraph write the present or past participle of the verb in parenthesis so we'll be writing either the uh, present participle or the past participle of the verb in the parenthesis and remember they are they are both acting as an adjective if you remember our previous lesson so number one uh, the, the first sentence is already done for you last year I took my first trip to India I was so excited so I was so, so he's describing how does he feel? I was so excited. So when you describe how you feel, how someone else feels, you use the, of course, the, uh, the past participle. You can notice here the ED here. This is the past participle. In the beginning, my vacation was disappointed because there were problems. So my vacation, my vacation was disappoint. So is he describing how someone feels or he is describing the source of the feeling? So was disappointing. Very good. In the beginning, my vacation was disappointing, ing. So we used here the present participle because there were problems with my flight. First, my flight got delayed. So I had to sit in the airport in Abu Dhabi for hours and hours. It was really bore. It was really bore. So is he describing something that he feels or is he describing the source? Very good, it's the source. So it was really boring. If he was describing himself, he would say, I was really bored. But he is describing the, uh, the situation. It was really boring finally they let us on the plane and we took off when we were close to new delhi the uh, they said there was bad weather and that we would have to circle we circled for at least an hour i was very frustrated i was very frustrated so i he's describing how does he feel or how is he feeling i was very very good Frustrated, so we used the ED, meaning we used the past participle. After a while, they said we were low on fuel and we would have to land in Goa. It was so irritate, so it was so very good. It was so irritating. I had already missed almost one whole day of my vacation. I was so Annoy here, I was so annoyed. So I, he's describing how does he feel. So I was so very good, I was so annoyed. So if you're describing how do you feel about something, you use the past participle. If you're describing the source of the feeling, you use the present participle, meaning I and G. Finally, after an hour in Goa, we got back to the plane and they flew us to New Delhi. I was what he's describing how does he feel so I was very good I was relieved when I finally got there New Delhi turned out to be very excite city so he's describing a city very good exciting he, he doesn't describe how does he feel here he's describing the source of the excitement, which is the New Delhi city. Again, New Delhi turned out to be a very exciting city. I loved it. There are many interest museums. So many what? Very good. Many interesting museums. And it has a fascinate history. So fascinate. Do we say fascinated or fascinating? It, so it here is New Delhi. Yes, very good, fascinating history. I went to see the monuments and gardens at Somaneria, Somaneria, Amsterdam. The, pla the, the place was so entertained, 
So the place, very good, entertaining. Even the people were welcome. Even the people were welcome. So he's not describing how does he feel. He's describing the source of the feeling. Very good, welcoming. In the end, I have to admit that it was a trip. So he's describing the trip here. So it was a satisfying trip. Very good. Exercise D, page 82. Answer the questions. Use get plus the adjective here. Use get plus the adjective or get plus the past participle. Get plus the adjective or get uh, plus the past participle. And remember the, uh, the lesson of the get plus the adjective or plus the past participle, which means some things are changing. Things are changing. Things are developing here. For example here, what happens if you don't get enough sleep at night? What happens if you don't get enough sleep at night? I get very tired. So this is the change here, the development. I get very tired during the afternoon. So now you know how to answer these questions. So let's answer them. Number one, what happens if you don't do your homework? So number one, what happens if you don't do your homework? Do you get something or maybe your teacher gets something? So let's see the answer for the first one here. What happens if you don't do your homework? My teacher will get angry. Of course, if you don't do your homework, your teacher, your teacher will get angry and maybe he will deduct marks or grades from you. Number two, what will you do if your friends never call you? Number two, what will you do if your friends never call you? If you feel that your friends never, uh, never call you, what will you do? What will you feel? You will get what? Very good, but let's see the answer here. I will get upset. I will be sad, of course. I will get upset, or maybe you can say, I will get angry, I will get disappointed, and so on. Number three, what happened? What happened when you got a good grade on a test? So what happened when you got a good grade, when the teacher was uh, distributing the grades to the uh, students, the papers? What happened when you, uh, when you saw your good grade? You got what? Okay, let's see the answer here. What happened when you got a good grade on a test? Of course, you will say, I got excited, or maybe you can say, I got happy. So this is number three here. Number four, what happens if you never leave the house? What happens if you never leave the house? So try to come up with the answer here. Let's see the answer here. I get bored. If I never leave the house, of course, I will get bored. Number five, what will happen if your friend falls over in the mud? What will happen if your friend falls over in the mud here. So what will happen if a friend falls over in the mud? You will get what? Or maybe he will get what? Or she will get dirty. She will get dirty. So what will happen if a friend falls over in the mud? You say she'll get dirty. Or maybe you say I'll get, uh, maybe, maybe you'll get dirty also from the splash maybe. What will happen if you accidentally fall down in front of your whole class? So again, what will happen if you accidentally fall down in front of the whole class? What will happen if you accidentally trip and fall down in front of the whole class? You will get what, of course? So let's see the answer here. I'll get embarrassed. I'll get embarrassed. Very good. Let's jump to exercise E here. Write two the, the comparative sentences for each picture. So you'll see the pictures, page 83. Open your book now, page 83. Write two the, the comparative sentences for each picture. The first one is already done here. The more you practice, the better you get. The older you get, the taller you get. If you remember, if you, uh, remember 
this uh, one is the uh, result of the other. So why do you get better? Why do you get better? Because you, get, you have more practice. So this is here is the result of the first one. So picture one, can you come up with two sentences using the, the, the comparative? Picture one, try to come up with two sentences, just like the first one here. So let's see the answer. The older you get, the happier you get. Very good. The more time you spend with your family, the happier you are. So the older you get, the happier you get. That's correct. The more time you spend with your family, the happier you are. So, and always uh, remember that this is, the, uh, this is the result here, and this is the cause. Why do I get happy? Why, do I, uh, why am I happy here? Because I'm spending time with my family. So, jumping on to the second picture, the picture number two, try to come up just like this one with two sentences. Try to come up with two sentences also here. Very good. But I have written here, the more you read, the smarter you get. The more you read, how do you get smarter? From reading. The more you study, the more bored you get. The more you study, the more bored you get. Very good. Number three. So give me two sentences here, just like number one and number two. So anything is correct here. Very good, but I've written here, the faster you ride, the better it feels. The faster you ride, the better it feels. The second one I've written here, the warmer it gets, the less you want to ride. The warmer it gets, the less you want to ride. And remember the, uh, the comma here between the two sentences. Remember to put the comma. Number four. Number four. Very good. But I've written here, the more you cycle, the stronger you get. And the second sentence, the less it trains, the more you can cycle. So the more you cycle, the stronger you get. And the less it trains, come on the more you can cycle. Number five, last one here. So I've written that the lower the sun gets, the prettier the sunset, or the second sentence, the later it gets, the lower the sun gets. Why does the sun get lower? Because it's, be, it, it's getting late. Again, the lower the sun gets, the prettier the sunset. And the other one, the later it gets, the lower the sun gets. Exercise F here, uh, finish the sentences, use a present or past participle, get plus adjective or uh, and ad get plus adjective or get plus past participle or the 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 comparative. So you can use all of them. The first one is already done. I get impatient when I have to wait for someone. So you can write anything as long as you're using any of the lessons from this unit the present participle or past participle, get plus the adjective or plus the past participle, and the, the, the comparative. So here, I get impatient when I have to wait for someone. So number one, are exciting, are exciting. Try to complete this gap using any of these lessons. So let me answer the first one for you so you can get the hang of it. Roller coasters are exciting. Roller coasters are exciting. What about number two here? The later it gets. So this is, of course, the, the, the comparative. The later it gets. Very good. The more tired I get. The later it gets. We're talking about time, of course. The more tired I get. Number three, I got frustrated. So I got, this is here, get plus the uh, past participle, of course. I got frustrated. Try to continue. Very good, but I've chosen here by my homework. I got frustrated by my homework. Number four, jokes. So very good, but I've written are entertaining. Jokes are entertaining. My mother 
gets worried. Number five, my mother gets, this is here, gets worried. Very good. So if I stay out late, so you can continue with, with whatever you want. Number six here is depressing. What is this depressing? Number six, cold, snowy weather is, de is uh, depressing. If you remember from the, the, from the conversation lesson, the longer I wait, this is the, the, the comparative, of course, the longer I wait, so the more frustrated I get. The, the longer I wait, the more frustrated I get. Number eight, history class. Number eight here, history class. So it can, is boring, for example. The more I go to school, number nine, the more I go to school, the smarter I get. Of course, this is the correct answer. Number 10, scary films. Scary films, you can continue whatever you want, are frightening. Scary films are frightening. Of course, this is the uh, present participle. Very good. Let's revise our previous lesson. If you remember the uh, listening, we, we were talking about do animals, uh, do animals laugh or not? And we listened to an article about, about some researchers and they found out they, that they do. Animals do laugh just like in the picture here. Look at the picture of the ape. What can they say about the ape? Is the animal smiling? And we filled this chart. We found out that the uh, uh, chimpanzees, yes, do, they do laugh, parrots and uh, minor birds, and also rats. And also we took the uh, pronunciation with the B and V sounds, letter B and the letter B, the uh, V, the B and the V sound. So these are today's objectives, or this is, is today's objective, get the meaning of new words from the context. So this is the vocabulary building lesson. You will see these words in the reading on pages 12 and 13, match the words with their meanings. So we'll be matching these words here from one to nine with their meanings here from A to, uh, to I. Of course, we have uh, some words here, equivalent, hearty, antibodies, uh, pediatric, uh, st uh, stimulate, enhance, prompt, and genuine. So uh, these are the words, but in the context from the reading lesson, cardiovascular and equivalent, laughing 100 to 200 times per day is the cardiovascular equivalent of rowing for 10 minutes. Hearty, however, this uh, certainly doesn't mean you should give up a visit to the gym for a hearty laugh. Antibodies, they tend to get sick less often because laughter has been shown to increase infection fighting antibodies. Pedi uh, pediatric, it is quite common to see a red nosed clown joking with young uh, patients in the pediatric world. Continuing here, stimulate and enhance. Laughter has also been found to make people alert, stimulate the brain and enhance learning. Prompt, during the club meetings, Katria would prompt members to laugh uh, a variety of ways. The last one here, genuine. Although Katria discovered the fake laughter produces the same health benefits as a genuine laughter, as genuine laughter, he was, uh, he was gratified to find that it usually didn't take long for fake laughter to turn into real laughter. So we'll be discussing this in the next lesson, of course. Let's get back to the exercise here. So we will be putting each letter from here, A and B and C and so on, in the correct place. So the first one, cardiovascular. Cardiovascular takes which letter here? What does it mean? You can read them. Then you can answer, cardiovascular. So let's see the correct answer here. It's the letter I. It's the letter I here involving the heart and blood vessels. The last one here, letter I, involving the heart and blood vessels. Very good. Equivalent. Equivalent. This is an easy one. Equivalent. It's almost the same word, so it's the letter E. Equivalent means equal. Equivalent means 
equal. They both start with the same three letters, E, Q, and U. Equivalent means equal. Number three, hearty. When he said hearty, laugh. So, can you guess the, uh, the meaning here? It's the letter C. Hearty laugh means strong and with feeling. So it's a real laugh, strong and with feeling. Antibodies, this is an easy one, I think. Antibodies, it goes with the letter, very good, with the letter G. Substance produced by the body to fight germs and infections. So the substances that our body produce, why? To fight infections and to fight germs. These are antibodies. What about pediatric? Pediatric. Very good. It's the letter uh, D related to medical care of children. From the word pediatrician, the doctor for children, the pediatric is related to medical care of children. Number six here, stimulate, goes with the letter very good with the letter B, to increase energy or activity, to increase the activity or to increase the energy. Number seven, enhance. Enhance goes with the letter F, to improve. So to enhance means to improve. What about number eight, prompt? Prompt goes with H, to cause someone to do something. Prompt here, to cause someone to make someone to do something. And the last one, genuine, goes with the letter A. Of course, genuine means real, not false. When something is genuine, it means that it is real, not, not uh, false. Be here, check your answer with your partner. If you don't understand the meaning of a word, look it up in a dictionary. Of course, any word here that you don't understand from the book, always look it up in the dictionary or just ask your teacher. And with that, we reach the end of this lesson. See you next lesson, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu anna la ilaha illa anta astaghfirka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.